Welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 266. On this episode of the podcast, Jen speaks with Christy Noel about three ways to boost landing interviews in a virtual job market. Here's my tip. When you're crafting your resume and cover letter, just remember that even though the interview is virtual, your imagination is real. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast. I'm your host, Jen Swanson. This is the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Careers by Jen is a listener-sponsored podcast, and if you like the content, please consider supporting the show as a patron. You can do so for as little as $1 a month. Head over to careersbyjen.com and click on support to learn more. So now that we're in the world of virtual interviews and a lot of searching for jobs is done online and less there, there are fewer, if any, uh, job fairs out there and things that you would go to in person at the moment, um, I'm going to be talking to our next uh, guest today about ways to boost landing interviews in this virtual COVID pandemic world. But before I get to that, I wanted to say a couple of things. I have a couple of videos up on the YouTube channel. If you haven't looked at our YouTube channel, a lot of the podcast, all the podcasts are there just in audio format, but I've got a couple of videos I put out. Um, one of them was from where I was this last week on a little bit of a vacation in beautiful BC. And, um, and they're just little tips, very short videos, five minutes or less on uh, tips and tricks for you at this time for your career. So check out the YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and I'll be putting out some more videos in the coming days. Um, and I also have some exclusive videos that are going up to the Patreon page if you're interested in becoming a patron. And um, some of those will actually be the video versions of the guest podcasts that I will be doing. So um, check that out too if you are um, interested in becoming a supporter of the show. All right. Um, I wanted to say before we carry on that I would like to acknowledge that Careers by Jen is recorded and brought to you over the internet from the unceded territory of the Salish people, in excuse me, including the Matsqui, the Kwantlen, and the Katsi First Nation. So today I have an amazing guest for you. Her name is Christy Noel. Christy is an award-winning executive with over 20 years of global branding, communications, and marketing experience. She is the creator and the author of the book, Your Career Sur Survival Guide, How to Get and Keep a Job in Times of Crisis. And Christy is also the co-author of a new book that has come out this summer called Your Personal Career Coach, Real World Experiences for Early Career success. She is the Senior Vice President of Marketing of Mobile Cause, a leading fundraising and communication software provider for nonprofits, and she's got her BA from the University of California in Los Angeles. And I began our conversation by asking Christy, what is the biggest job search challenge right now in this pandemic time? How do I get a noticed how do i stand out when there are 50 million people out of work and what can i do to get my resume and my application noticed and picked up and followed up and get an interview that will lead me to the job yikes so it's a big competition right now for uh for many people it is and that's what's changed so much in the last several months jennifer is that it used to be the job seekers market they had a lot more opportunity they almost got their pick of jobs people companies were calling them and and recruiting now in just a short few months the tables have totally changed and there are so many people sadly out of work that the competition for those open positions is just skyrocketed 
So it is a challenging time to try and, you know, as I said, get noticed and get a job. Yeah, it's a difficult, uh, difficult time for many. Um, so today we're talking about three ways to boost landing interviews in a virtual job market because a lot of people are still um, having to do things online. We're using Zoom more than we've ever used it ever before and Skype and all sorts of other platforms. And, um, and so do you want to just jump right in to what are some of these ways to boost your chances? Absolutely. And these are strategies that work both in a virtual market and in person, but they're even more important now because of the, the lack of being able to, to get face to face and, and you know, walk into a, an organization if, and some of the other traditional networking strategies of going to, to meet people. And my first tip is to customize your cover letter and your resume for every position. And it's really important uh, and to spend that extra time to customize for the particular job you are applying to. And I see too many job seekers who have their standard resume and their standard cover letter, assuming they have a cover letter, and that's a whole number of their topic we can talk about too. Um, and then they shoot them off or they hit apply on LinkedIn for those of us here in North America that use um, LinkedIn and, and other um, online job portals and, and boards where how easy it is just to hit apply and, and then one version of your resume goes, but you're not doing yourself a service by doing that. In fact, um, that is not time well spent. <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily a numbers game in the sense that quantity will win. It's really the quality that will win. So read the job description closely, find out the nuggets, the keywords, the key responsibilities, what they're looking for that aligns with what your experience is, and then make sure that's, um, make sure that is displayed well on your resume and your cover letter and that that comes across so that there is a, whether it's a computer that's reviewing your resume or a human, that those key elements responsibilities, experience, requirements, pop off your resume and get noticed. And that, I love that you say that because I say this over and over and over again. Um, and in fact, I just did a, a YouTube video this morning that, um, that I mentioned the cover letter. Um, and, and again, some people don't, don't have cover letters, don't know how to write them, and don't take the time to do that tailoring um, and so it's, it's very obvious to somebody taking in a resume or taking in a cover letter when it's a blanket one, when it's one that isn't tailored or isn't suited to the job. When it, and sometimes they don't even match. Um, I know I did, I did a, a little bit of relief work in an HR department for a city um, a few years ago, and, uh, and my job was to take in these resumes, sort them all out, and put them into the uh, potential pile and the no thanks pile and um and oh my goodness the ones that came in that were exact they weren't even they didn't even seem like they were for the same job that was being posted <laughs> and it's like what what <laughs> yeah that's exactly the cover letter i'm not talking about <laughs> so just because you have a color cover letter that maybe has a couple sentences that's not what i'm saying when i mean you know customize and send a, co a cover letter and it should have, uh, and what I love about the cover letter, Jen, is that it helps define who you are, show your personality, and really spotlight your experience. So it shouldn't replicate exactly the resume, but it should complement it, and then maybe even go into a little bit more detail. Because um, you have the ability to write out complete sentences, and, and maybe there's a particular, maybe they're looking for somebody who's a social media marketing manager and that's your particular niche and you can spend a little bit more time talking about how you know you are have created this incredible success in what you're doing and some examples of how you use your skills to grow social media followings or convert them into sales you know whatever it is for your particular case 
The cover letter is also really important because if for some reason there's something that may not be obvious that how you're aligned to the, the job you're applying, you can explain it in the cover letter. On a resume, if you, the hiring manager looks at it and says, well, this doesn't look like it's a fit, kind of like what you said, right? You're putting them in the different piles. Well, I don't get why this is a fit. You know, that's the pass pile or the no pile. Um, but the cover letter gives you the opportunity to say, hey, you know, you wouldn't write it this way, of course, but it's basically, hey, while at first glance, I might not look like, but here's why I am. And maybe it's a geographical element. That, hey, I'm moving to uh, Vancouver next week, and therefore, this is why I'm applying for a job that's there, even though my, you know, address might be in the US or something like that. It might be while well, you can explain gaps in your resume that maybe you had to take care of a, a sick family member, maybe you were in school, maybe you were traveling the world. Those kind of things may not show up on your resume, but you can explain them in the cover letter and even say, hey, I've been traveling the world and now I have all this incredible international experience I can bring to the job. So there's so many important reasons to include a cover letter, but back to your point, if it's just a three sentences and attached find my resume, then it's not doing what it is designed to do. Right, and it's a missed opportunity in such a big way. And, and I understand that, because I get it, I've, I've written a lot of cover letters in my career too, they, they take a little time. And so I can see why people think, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll spend my time somewhere else or nobody really reads them or I don't know how important it is. So I'm here to tell you that they do get read. They may not get read 100% of the time, but it's not a risk you want to take by assuming that they're not read. Um, so they do get read. They are important and they do provide really good nuggets of information about you that will help enhance your chances of getting the resume, which is, or excuse me, of getting the interview, which is one step closer to getting the job. Right. Okay, so that's step one. That's one way to boost landing an interview in a virtual job market. What's the second one? So the second one is to focus on results and your successes in both your cover letter and your resume. So spend less time talking about your job description in those documents and more time talking about what you achieved in them. So going back to my social media marketing manager example, you may only need a sentence or two to describe what that is. Most hiring managers, particularly if they're hiring for a job that's like that, understands what the job responsibilities are. So don't, you don't need to put a whole big paragraph of all the things you did. Better off spent putting some bullet points of what those results were and metrics, uh, impact metrics, I like to call them. So how many, how did you increase followers? How many, you know, what was your percentage of converting them to sales or acquainting a revenue dollar to each of those followers? Or uh, if you were in, did you save time? So depending upon that's a you know, marketing role might have different metrics. Uh, a sales role certainly has a lot of sales metrics that you'd want to showcase. Finance, you might have saved the company money or you may have uh, increased collections and decreased churn and or maybe you save time or increase productivity. So whatever your job is, I'm sure that you were measured by something. Your boss was, was telling you what you needed to do in order to get uh, a gold star or a promotion or a raise. Those are the kind of metrics that are important to the, to the role that you did. And those are the ones that you should be focusing on. Hiring managers, Recruiters, they want to know that you were successful in your job, not just that you did it, especially when in, in a competitive market like we're in right now. So that's how you will stand out is to show that you have had great success in the role and the job that you've been in, because now the hiring manager can look and say, well, oh, she really did well. If she did that there, she can do that for me. And that's as a hiring manager, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who can step in, get hit the ground running, get the job done, and do it well. And that's why focusing on your results can really set you apart. And I think that's, that's really an important thing to, because it, I always talk about the real estate of your resume. And by that, I mean the, the space on the page or the two pages max um, that you, you're going to fill up. And it would be really easy to turn that into five pages if you started to list every single little thing that you did in your job description. And it's boring. 
and nobody wants to read that you filled up the photocopier with paper or whatever. So, so it's kind of, it's kind of very much more interesting and, and useful to do as you say, and talk about the things you achieved rather than uh, listing the laundry list of tasks that you had to do, because honest to goodness, nobody cares. I, I think they do care. They will ask you, have you used Excel or have you used, you know, this kind of tool in your factory or whatever, whatever it happens to be you're, you're interviewing for. They can ask you those questions in an interview. And maybe some of those things are vital on a resume, but to detail every single little thing, what a waste of space. Yes, I could, I could not agree more. And I, I agree with you on the real estate. You only have so much space. So you want to make sure what you put in that space is really important to getting the job or getting the interview, not just to fill up the space. So going back to what the things we've talked about in step number one, if you're going to write your job description, make sure it aligns with the position you're applying for. So the key elements of what they're looking for that you've done, make those your job description in short, you know, just paragraph form I and mean, real estate, a little bit of real estate, and then show even more, demonstrate your abilities by showing your results and your impact metrics. And whether you have only a few jobs or if you have a lot, that same method of displaying it is how you should go use up your real estate on those two pages. And that is not boring, <laughs> very interesting, and will differentiate you. And that's what you're trying to do right now. Absolutely. That's the key right now, especially if, you, if as you say, that there are so many people vying for jobs that um, you want to stand out. And, and I don't know if this is true in your experience, but um, it's that little bit of extra effort that even says more than what is written on the page. It says you're prepared. It says you've taken time and you've invested yourself in tailoring the cover letter and tailoring the, um, uh, the resume um, and, and in reading their job description thoroughly and really trying to understand what it is and then trying to explain how it is that you can help. Um, so I think beyond just what it says on the page, it also demonstrates your motivation um, in an unspoken way, right? By, Ab by Absolutely, because it demonstrates that you paid attention, that you actually read it. Like to your example, right? It's like you said, did they even read the job description? Like this doesn't make sense, right? Like we can see that as a hiring manager or recruiter. That doesn't, you know, bode well for you when we can see that. <laughs> so it shows that you have attention to detail that you are paying attention, that you understand what's important by having those impact metrics uh, to the ones that are going to be related to the job. That she, it's like, I, she understands what I'm trying to achieve and what is needed in the job. And she's proven that she can do it. And you are a go-getter and you take the time. And that's why I think it's so important. I'd rather have somebody spend, send, you know, five resumes and take the time to customize it and the cover letter and get to, to jobs that they're really aligned with than to send, you know, a hundred resumes that are just not customized to a bunch of jobs. Um, it's just, you know, we can see through that and you're not going to get anywhere. And that's not a good use of your time. And, and I want to try and help your listeners really spend time that they're going to get the, the best bang for their buck, if you will, you know, the best return on their investment than just um, sending off the resume, you know, whoever's looking for a job in hopes that it's like throwing spaghetti on the wall, right? And see what sticks. It doesn't work that way in job, job searching, unfortunately. I think it used to, and maybe that was the advice before I got into career coaching, because it seems like it's a thing, you know, people will do that. They'll spend three hours uh, randomly applying for things and, and sending out the same information to, you know, a hundred places, as you say, and, and there I've done three hours on my job search today, but it's, it's about working more efficiently and effectively than, than volume and, and time spent, I think, when you're searching for a job. And, and I, I see too many career seekers look, they, oh, well, that job sounds interesting. I'll apply to that. Even if they have no experience, <laughs> no background, um, 
yes, it might really sound interesting and be really fun, but they are not looking to hire you because you think it's interesting or it sounds fun. They want, they, you know, they want somebody who's done the job. And at the moment, they can find those people. So I think that maybe at one point, it was like, well, that was kind of a fit and it's a good background and, you know, maybe we'll give it a try. That, you know, that's not the world we're in right now. So uh, I caution people not to send their resume to the jobs <laughs> that sound fun. <laughs> I had a person on their resume purpose, like objective for applying for this job to make money. <laughs> I thought, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some honesty there. Yeah, but... there's some honesty, but <laughs> you could have said it a little differently. Yes. Oh my goodness. So what's the third way to boost your chances? The third way is to not rely solely on job boards to get your resume into a company for a position of which you are a good fit. Uh, that you can continue to do that, but I would never tell you to stop there if you can help it. So use LinkedIn if that's a, a tool that you have access to or any other types of social networking or other types of networking to get somebody who can help you send in your resume to the hiring company. It doesn't have to be the hiring manager, that's your ideal, but to the hiring company. So just by having me send your resume, Jennifer, and say, hey, I know you have an open position. Um, here's a, a woman I know, I think you should check out her resume. Will really boost your chances of at least knowing it's getting reviewed and at least reviewed by a person instead of a computer and, and what the algorithm is of whether that might be picked up or not. And the person doesn't even need to know you or give you a glowing recommendation. We love that, of course, when that happens. But just the, just the little act of getting some other way of getting your resume in so that you have the traditional channel and then another one where, where there's a human touch will help you get noticed in this job market. And so you might have to get crafty and you might have to get creative and find somebody. <laughs> you know, uh, I always say it's like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon and separation, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, so the closer your degrees, the fewer degrees, I guess you say the better. But if it's my friend who knows somebody who works and they have a cousin, you take it. And there's not a lot of that happening. So again, that's another way to, to stand out and, and get noticed, that human touch. Do you ever uh, counsel people anymore to hand deliver a resume and a cover letter? You know, I would say at this point, it can't hurt. Uh, I don't know, you know, every organization is a little different. Some people might think, oh, wow, they've gone the extra effort. And some might think, whoa, what, you know, <laughs> are they stalking? Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, I do think that snail mail is a good, you know, traditional mail service is not uh, a bad way to go these days because so little is coming through the mail, at least for me here in the United States, that's of interest. You know, I get some bills and some junk mail, but I don't really get things that I'm excited about. So sometimes when I do get something that's different and I, I'll open it, you know, you're, yeah, or you're right now probably more apt to get me to open a letter than it is an email. So as I said, I wouldn't bypass the other methods, but that could be an additional, you know, add it to it. Um, way to get in your resume in and it might get opened by somebody who and uh, if the organization has assistance I know not everybody has administrative assistance at the moment um, or has for the last 10 years that's kind of that position has changed but if you are applying for a job and and the hiring manager or the reporting manager has an assistant then sometimes they're great because they'll open email and uh, regular mail and if they see something they like sometimes they'll push it forward so um, yeah I, you know, at this point, I say giving anything a try is, is, is worth it. And I again, would, if you're qualified yeah. and, <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm you, just, I'm just thinking, I hadn't thought about the mailing with the envelope before. And I'm thinking with, with uh, COVID and not being able to go into places and stuff, that's probably a better option right now. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, maybe you take a little bit of extra care and get some really nice paper you know, like some heavier paper, um, put in a little handwritten note. I don't know. There are things you could probably do that would make you stand out that way if you did it um, 
the old fashioned way <laughs> because yep. it's new again, right? <laughs> yeah. And so you might put your resume in your cover letter, just how you submitted it. But you said, like you said, maybe you put a handwritten note and say, Hey, I'm super excited by this opportunity because I really think I can make a difference. I, I'm exactly what you're looking for. And I really w- can't wait to talk to you about all the ways that I can drive results for your company. And, and send it off. And that's the other thing about whether it's uh, in your cover letter or your handwritten note or uh, an email follow-up, you know, you can show that you're enthusiastic about the job, but you're enthusiastic because you're going to drive results for them. You're going to make an impact. You're going to bring in sales. You're going to save them money, whatever it is that job is that you're, you're aiming for. Um, you have to remember that they're looking at it from what's in it for me, not what's in it for you as the employer. So watch is why I want to make a lot of money is not a great objective <laughs> <laughs> because the company doesn't, they're more interested in, well, what are you going to, you know, what are you going to bring to me? Um, if they said, I want to make you a lot of money, then that's different. <laughs> that's different. Absolutely. You might get a lot more attention with, <laughs> with that. And then in the process, if I make money, okay, that's okay. But yes, so you always want to come at it. And that's another mistake I think on, I see on um, you know, cover letters. It's like, I'm so excited because I think it'd be so fun to work for Google, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, yeah, whatever. But it's really not about what you want. It's about how you're going to impact the company. Right. Oh, that's great. Well, Christy, where can people find you if they want to know more about what you do? Oh, well, appreciate that. Yes. I'm at christynoel.com. And since we talked about cover letters so much, if they go to christynoel.com slash cover letter, I have a free cover letter guide with some templates and some other tips to help craft, especially for those people who are either writing a cover letter for the first time or not really feeling comfortable that their cover letter is optimizing their abilities as much as they could be. That's wonderful. That's fabulous. So um, do you have one last piece of advice for the Careers by Jen listener? I do. I would say keep your spirits up. There is a job out there. People are hiring. It just takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more time maybe right now. And just make some progress every day you know it doesn't I know it gets tiring and it gets wearing and sometimes you just need a break and that's okay too but just make some progress if it's maybe polishing your resume up a little bit one day you know doing some research finding some opportunities maybe see what industries are hiring um, reaching out to people in your network that maybe you haven't reached out to in a while just to say hi and um, you know just slow, steady progress and keep at it and is much better for your psyche and your likelihood of getting hired than to be spamming off your resume, you know, a hundred times and then walking away and waiting for something to happen. That's true. It's a, it's slow and steady wins the race. Cliche. Absolutely. But it works. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but it's true. That's why these cliches come to be, right? <laughs> There's usually some element of truth to them. Uh, well, thanks for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. And I think this will be uh, really good reminders and some new information for people. And, um, and I'm really glad that we were able to connect today. So thank you. I am as well. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.